Hi everybody, it's Randy and we're back working on the 308 project. We had the front right wheel here almost complete except for kind of one bit and that is this guy which is a soft brake line. I believe the soft brake lines on this car are original so while I'm in here I might as well go ahead and swap them out just to be safe. But when we ordered them what we got were parts for uh, an older carbureted car so back in the 70s kind of thing and evidently the ends of those are different than the ones for the later cars, certainly the QV. Oh well, not the end of the world, but I had to wait to get the new parts. So in this video, what I want to do is finish up this last stupid little bit for the front right wheel, and then we'll be getting to the back right wheel and getting that put back together. That's going to be a thing. It's completely different than the front wheel, so it, it ought to be interesting. All right, well, let's start by getting our soft brake line in. On the back here, this this is a 17 millimeter, I believe. It's very, very thin. All right, well, let's see if that'll hold for now. The other side is an 11, I believe. Huh. I don't know how to swing this. You know, this is totally something I should have done before the steering column went in. I had no idea the access was going to be so tight. But with my wrench here, I've got openings like this, and I can't there's no way I'm going to be able to get around it. Let's see. Yep, that's it. Okay, so that's loosening. This is Franny from the future. Now, I don't want to spend too much time on this brake line, but if you are going to replace it, go ahead and just cut it in half. That'll make your life a lot easier. Next thing you want to do is to remove the big clip that's holding on the line to the car side. With that loose, you can then put your 11 millimeter on the hard line and put your 17 on your old soft line and spin it right off. Now, remember, you're going to have a decent amount of brake fluid coming out, so just be ready for that. That. Screw on your new line, go ahead and torque that down, and then add your clip back there. But remember, now the fluid is running through the new hose, so make sure you plug it at the other end. Now on the caliper side, it did give me quite a bit of grief actually. So same sort of thing, you want to remove that clip first, and then you want to separate your old line from the little S-curve hard line that's going down to the caliper. But I found that that little S-line, the hard line, wasn't lined lined up through the hole in the bracket, and that just made life a huge pain. So what I ended up doing was loosening up that bracket, actually, putting the hose through, and then working the clip on the back just to make sure it doesn't back back out. And then with that whole bracket loose, you can move it around a little bit and hook it up to that S hard line. Once you've got that in a few turns, you're all set. Then you can kind of work your bracket back to where it needs to be, and you can go ahead and and tighten your bracket back up and then tighten the two hoses and then make sure your clip is all the way down. It's just kind of a pain. It's a job that I thought was going to take 10 minutes, ended up taking an hour. All right, well, moving on, I've got all the parts laid out for the right rear wheel, all the new hardware, the new shock, a whole nine yards.
this is Fanny from the future again. Now I did fuss and fuss and fuss with that lower A arm. It was a bear to get on, but when I was putting on the one on the other side of the car, I think I came up with a little better way to do this. The first thing you want to do is to strap up that hub and get it up as high as possible. That'll make your life a lot easier. Then you can separate that rearward bracket. That works just fine. Put the bracket in the car and then put the A arm back in the bracket. That works great. Or if you want, you can pull the bolt out that's going through that bracket and kind of pull it out just enough because the head or the nut, depending on which way you have it in, is going to collide with another bracket on the frame. And you kind of have to work that a little bit. But either way works. And in the end, it's not the end of the world, but it just seems kind of fussy the first time you do it. I had hoped this bushing would just slide right in easily, and it didn't. After hammering and hammering, it just didn't go all the way in. So I found an easier way to do it. Let me show you that right now. What I found worked best was just a simple bolt and a couple large washers. You can run that sleeve all the way in until it's completely flush. A few notes about this assembly. You'll notice I'm using a lot of the never sleeves there. That's to keep everything together. That little pin just doesn't want to stay in that little hole by itself. Also, take a look at this washer, the one with the little hole in it. One side of it has a dry lubricant bonded to it. I believe it's PTFE. The other side does not. So the side with the lubricant needs to go towards the center, which is the part that's actually going to move. The other side of it is locked by that pin. Now, now something else about this PTFE is I read it probably should be assembled dry and that's because the grease can actually ablate the surface over time. Another place we see the PTFE is the top bushing. And you'll see I put a generous coating of grease on that as well. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. Let me know down in the comments what you think. So if you're putting this together yourself, it might be a good idea to dry off those parts, although it's going to be awfully hard to get them perfectly clean. It's all a bit of a tight fit. I did have to use my plastic hammer a bit to sort of push it all into place, but it wasn't that hard getting it all aligned. I did add a bit of the never sleeves to the bolt itself. And after it was all together, I did wipe it down a bit because boy, that never sleeves just goes everywhere.
Well, I think that was the hot setup. It's really important to do the top and the bottom of this wheel hub assembly first, just because it's so tight and there's a lot of pieces in there and it's just barely going to fit in there. So I think it's best to get that all lined first and then we can go ahead and lock down our clamps on the back there that hold the bottom of the A-arm to the car. So that's where we are now. Let's go ahead and lock those down. Now there's a bunch of shims here and I went through a lot of fuss to get these things all organized and in the right spots. So I've got two sets of them, one for the forward and one for the rear. And we just need to make sure we get our shims in before we torque that down. So I'll show you what that looks like. So we want to make sure we get the right set of spacers. So this is the rear right wheel, rearward lower. So I labeled them as well. I went through all of these with the caliper before I sent them off and I labeled H1 to know exactly what sizes went where. And as you can see, they're different. This one's 2.5, then two, then two, then 0.8. So it's important to get these correct. Now the order in which they go in is not too important, just the total thickness. Okay, that's cinched down. For our forward fork, we have right rear wheel, forward lower. And this one has an even greater assortment. Look at that, we got three twos here with these big sort of Pac-Man-y guys. Then we have a one, a 0.8, and another two, but a completely different shape. So it's a little nutty, these spacers, but this is what determines the alignment on the car. So we wanna be very careful to try and get all these back in exactly how they came out. And that'll give us a fighting chance on the initial alignment. Okay, that's all of them in. Holy cow, it's a lot. The torque for these huge bolts here is eight kilogram meters or about 58 foot pounds. I've got my torque wrench all set here. Let's go ahead and nip these up. There we go. And this one down here, because I can't get this over this. It's so close, but I just can't. And once again, we're using our torque adapter because on this car, there are so many instances where I just can't get the socket over the bolt. It's impossible to do. So I use my torque adapter as it is on every video and I get a bunch of comments about this. So as long as our driving ratchet here is at 90 degrees, to our wrench, whatever we have the torque wrench set to will be the torque applied here or here. Now, if we were to turn it so that both linear like this, then of course you'd have to add the distance from the head of this all the way up to here because that counts as the distance. When it's at 90 degrees, the total distance from here to the driver is just the length of the torque wrench. So that's why you don't have to add the extra torque. Actually, you would be reducing your torque wrench. If you're gonna do this, you'd reduce your torque wrench because you've got an extra bit of torque here that you're adding. I always wanna make sure that I keep this as close to 90 degrees as possible and whatever we've got set here is what we're gonna deliver. And that's it. And that's our 58 foot pounds. Next step is going to be to jack this up like we did with the front wheel and torque all the rest of the bolts as well. Now, the big question is, what is the torque value for all of these bolts? They're all really similar. They're all M12 bolts. It's so hard to tell from the manual because it seems to kind of contradict itself in some places. It's just a little strange. What I'm going to go with is 50 foot pounds on these. It's kind of, a, it's either between 40 and 50. So I don't know, I'd kind of rather these things didn't come off. We do have lock nuts on all of these as well, which is kind of nice. But I think 50 is where we want to be for this size bolt. All right, well, let's get to it. We've got a bunch to do. We've got the back of the A-arms and the front of the A-arms and our shock. So, quite a few. There we go. Okay, that's that one. 
So this is really confusing to me. The spec says that for the bolt to the top where we're connecting the shock absorber to the chassis is only 20 foot pounds. That's not a lot at all. The one down at the bottom here, because we have a CAD plated bolt, is 40 foot pounds. Hmm, so what do you... <laughs> What do you do in these instances? I mean, this is a big bolt up here. This is a number 12 up here at the top. It's the same size as all the other bolts that we've been torquing to 50. The, the one that's actually connecting the shock to the wheel hub is supposed to be 40, and it's got a really, really teeny head on it. But, all right, 40. Let's do that one first, because I'm pretty certain that one sounds reasonable. All right, there we go, 40 foot-pounds. Well, the manual says that that bolt up there is a number eight, and it so isn't a number eight. It's a number 12. It's just like all the other bolts on here. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go with 40 up there, and we've done the, the bolt down here onto the actual hub carrier here at 40 as well. So that's what I'm gonna do for that one up there. There we go, 40 foot pounds. Okay, good. That's all marked. Well, I think that's it. I think we got all of our bolts torqued. So to recap, all of the suspension, big suspension bits, I went with 50 foot pounds. And then for the shock absorber itself, I went with 40. And that kind of makes sense because the bolt is very different that attaches the shock to the actual hub carrier here. It's got a really, really teeny head on it. So 40 there. And up here at the top, they're saying that's a number eight up there. It's like, there's no way, that's a number 12. So do you go 40? 40 or 50, well the bottom one is at 40, so I did the top one at 40 as well. So we've got 50 all around except for that guy up there at the top. All right, let's go ahead and lower the suspension back down and I think that'll pretty much be it. Somebody had mentioned that I should get a set of hockey pucks and they literally just came about an hour ago. <laughs> I ordered these weeks ago, they took forever, I guess. But at any rate, those are, these things are great. Really hard piece of rubber, which is perfect for putting underneath the suspension bits when you jack it up. I was using, uh, say, like a piece of wood and then maybe a towel over it, but that's not super secure either. It could slide because of the towel. The suggestion the hockey puck was a great suggestion and works really, really well. Well, our right rear wheel is looking awesome here. I think we're all set. I still the drop link to do and the any sway bar but I'm gonna do that after I get the other side done so it's just not in the way all right well I hope you enjoyed the episode if you did please give it a thumbs up questions or comments go ahead and leave them down below and I'll get right to them if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and do that now because we got obviously the other side of the car to do and we've got mechanical work to do on the engine all sorts of stuff all right well thank you so so much for watching and as always a very special thank you to our patreon supporters until next time time. Safe travels. Bye.